it's like having a blade swinging above your head. Something may happen. You don't know when and you don't know why or where. I can hear the yelling going on and I'm going to try and get some help to you now. So just hold while I call triple zero. He came charging towards me and he grabbed my neck, saying, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. Her partner has come home who's extremely violent. She's currently locked herself in the bathroom at home and she's waiting on police to arrive. At the moment, I can hear yelling in the background and it sounds like things being thrown. I just flipped, just had no control, no control. He would regularly threaten to slit my throat. That was his favourite one. My big fear is that our kids will end up like us. If we keep pushing someone into a corner, yeah. what do you think's going to happen? Yeah, and she'd be freaked out the way that I'm acting at the moment because it's possessive, like just psycho. I get clients where police have attended or he's pushed her and shoved her and then the first thing she's done is got her keys, got into the car and left and then spoken to him saying, I can't do this anymore, you need to get help. And that's when my phone will ring. Sasko, David, Ken, Justin, Micah and Nathan. I'm a big believer men can change. I know I've changed. We don't have to live like this. What's at stake is my family. Focusing on your breath, just breathe in and taking a nice deep breath and breathing out. Now I want you to go back to a time when you had an explosion. What's happening with your physical body when you're in build up? Right knee twitches, hands clench into fists, stomach cramps, arms tense, glassy eyes, headache, blackout. Just try doing that again. Get over it. I am so angry. I'm done. I've had it. I want to die. Belittled, flustered. Alone, stressed, confronted, agitated, uneasy. I don't feel heard. I feel like yelling. I feel justified and frustrated. I mean, I was violent to her and angry and smashed stuff and pushed her around. The verbal abuse was terrible. Grabbed hold of it and pinned it on the on the bed, and I was, you know, almost. Well, I was. I was strangling her. I've been doing this for the last 15 years, and I've literally worked with hundreds of men. There's no typical abuser. There's no typical client. These men come from all walks of life. I grew up in an abusive family. My father was very loud, very controlling. In the last four or five years, I've become very loud, very controlling. I'm here because I want to stop the abuse. I want my kids to be happy and safe. No drugs, no alcohol. I have zero tolerance to violence. So no threats, 
No put downs, no violence. If I hear that there's been an act of violence at home, Jackie and I have got a duty of care by law to disclose. Most of them present that they'll do anything. They want their family back. They want to change this bad behaviour. They acknowledge it. But my biggest concern is how sincere they are. How real are they? I'm just, um, you know, I'm single now, uh, a couple of kids. I've been getting told a lot that I'm an angry, angry man. Alcohol was getting to be a major factor and it led me to rehab first, then to AA, then to the men's group, which preferred me on to your group. I've been controlling of the money, I've been controlling of her friends, I've done everything from grab her to hit her, to hold her on the ground. A lot of things way out of line. So we move forward from here, put a stop to that? We try. When you say try, at this stage it's... Oh, you don't just change overnight, do you? I think it's really important to stress, and I can't stress this enough, that it doesn't matter what your partners and kids do. It doesn't matter what they do. Family violence is absolutely never okay. been brought up many a time about my anger and uh, the way I deal with things. I've recently separated from a missus for 19 years. Me boy. He doesn't talk a lot. He's a confused little kid at the moment. But his answer to everything is, I don't know. Just a good kid. Maybe I didn't show as much attention as I should have. It's not just the relationship side of it. It happens at work too. But... Get away! I don't think you're going to turn me into no Prince Charming, but... <laughs> oh, look, I've made plenty more mistakes than the ones I'm making now. I was in trouble for most of my adolescent life. For me to come from what I was to where I am now was a big step. And now everyone wants to tell me that I'm, this is wrong and that's wrong. Well, I'll see what I can do about it. But don't expect me to change overnight. It'd be interesting to find out if you get in and out of it, you know? Because I, I wouldn't mind, you know, if, if, it, if it works and you get some good pointers, I wouldn't mind doing it myself, you know? Because I've got a couple of things I wouldn't mind fine-tuning. No one wants to ring Lifeline or something like that because you don't think it's that bad. But if you can talk to someone that's on mutual grounds, then, it, then you know, it might save someone having a few black eyes. <laughs> I, I think what, what helps me is just being around blokes that normal blokes like myself, you know? It's a bit of bloke time is what, what, what people need, you know? But I better get back into it before I get in trouble, because he'll start yelling. The thing about explosion is, I don't like the word. I don't like it, because it kind of minimises it. Some guys will say to me, hey, it's like a stick of dynamite, I've got this short fuse, and I don't know when it's going to go off, but when it does, it does. It can go like that, bang. 
My dad had one, my brother had one. I've got one, I know I've got one. We actually choose, it's a choice to be abusive. It's your cycle. But you take your partner and your children around this cycle with you. This is the man's cycle and your family follow you. Until someone says, I can't do this anymore. I can't live my life like this. I was abusive myself at some stage. I noticed in my relationships as I was growing up, if I'd get angry or things weren't going my way, I started to sound like my father. One day I lost it. I smashed up my own car, our family car, in front of everybody. I got a bit of pipe out of the work vehicle and if I couldn't have the car, well then nobody can have the car. And I landed up smashing the windscreen and going, hell for weather on it, with this bit of pipe. These family friends just all stood there frozen. And the hard part was the children, seeing the children's faces. <sighs> it was pretty tough, because the children's faces reminded me of my own self with my own father. Looking at this guy who's out of control. That was the turning point. That was when everyone knew what David could be like. He could be a real asshole. I pledged that I'll never be that man again and that I needed to show other men that you can change, you can put a stop to this if you really want to. Hey, it's my boy. <laughs> I've been trying to shut out thoughts and feelings and all that about my ex-partner because it's not constructive, I don't think. I just gotta concentrate on my kids. And to be honest, I had a shitty moment tonight, actually, before I come here. I was running short of time. I had a big day at work. I was trying to organise some dinner and then be here on time. And in the end, I actually got the shits up because there was nothing done. Because we have a sort of a deal going, me and the kids. I cook the dinner, I do everything for them. They help me out. We help each other. So it's conditional? Well, no. Is it? Is that conditional? It sounds like everybody putting in a little bit of effort. That's what it sounds like to me. As long as... Well, everything, everything costs, Dave. Nothing's for free. I don't know what world you come from, but I don't come from a world where nothing is free. But, you know, I work 12 hours a day and... You know, my work's very, very demanding. Hold it, hold it. Just see what you're just doing to it right now. What are you doing? I'm yeah. justifying it. Yeah. Straight away. Well, I didn't want to say anything. You're forcing me to say shit, so I was quite happy sitting here saying nothing. And now what are you doing to me? Well, I'm shutting up then. So this is the thing. We're so conditioned to justify... Well, then I don't know how to be a fucking father then, Dave, all right? I don't know how to be a father then. And, you know, just feeling really uncomfortable with me challenging you on that. I'm not uncomfortable. I'm shitty about it. So what? OK, so if you're feeling shitty, you must be feeling uncomfortable. No, I'm not uncomfortable, Jackie. I'm very comfortable being a shitty person. I've been all my life. OK, but then it's uncomfortable for those around you when you're shitty. So it's uncomfortable for you girls. Hmm. Probably right. I've been to a lot of fights. Not only, you know, um, with people at the pub or people you go out, my father, I've had, I, had a, I had a fight with him on Christmas Day, and it ruined Christmas Day. I broke my brother's collarbone years ago through fighting. It didn't matter if it was the guy down the road, my wife, um, my mother, anybody. It was just what I said, and that's how it was. And, uh, if you didn't like it, you go get fucked. Nathan's abuse was mental, physical, emotional, towards me and towards the children. We used to go out 
I'd be driving home and he'd be drunk and he didn't like the way I was driving and it would just hit me. His explosions were unpredictable. That's the frightening thing. I'd been out with a girlfriend. He wasn't happy with me going out, so I didn't even bother going to bed. I just went and laid on the couch. And about three o'clock in the morning, I was woken by him dragging me off the couch by my throat. And he, he nearly choked me to the point where I nearly blanked out. That was the point where I said, enough. He refused to leave, so I had to leave. I knew my kids were safe with him. They were older, so he'd never be physical with them. Um, so it was their home. So I, I left and left them with him, um, which in hindsight I wish I'd never done. That's my biggest regret. My bond with my girls is gone. We're getting it back slowly, but it's not the same. I never really knew my daughters at all. I had a great big shed, <laughs> bar, all that stuff, had all the good stuff in there. And to drink a lot, and that was my life. The trucks, my shed, my mates, and yeah, I didn't really pay any attention to Sue or what was wrong with her. I just sort of took the approach, the old style approach, and harden up, you know. And now I come to meet Dave because uh, she'd left me, and I was fairly distraught. Yeah. Make some sandwiches, yeah? You happy with that? Yeah. Um, I've got group tonight, you know that, don't you? Sasuke's done a lot of work prior to coming to us. He's very open about wanting to work on himself, but has never been able to get tools or skills to change. He wants to be this father figure for his children that is loving, supportive, unconditional. We're challenging him. I think that's been good for Sasko. All righty. All right, let's get the show on the road. What's been happening over the week? On Saturday, my boss unleashed his anger to me. Like, he was, he was screaming full on at me. And I had no idea what. He's asked me to leave. But I spent a lot of the day thinking, could I have done something differently to, to achieve a different outcome. And I was playing different scenarios over and over and over again. And I was really getting myself worked up. And how did that make you feel? Oh, helpless. 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 Fearful, embarrassed, lost, confused, belittled. All those feelings. Phenomenal amount of feelings. You yeah, took, I just, so you took it on? I, I, I was trying to work out what was going on. The power and control was all in his court. It sounds like how he's been treated is probably how, uh, like, I've treated my wife. It sounds like the universe is giving you a taste of your own medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, just as um, Oscar was saying that, I haven't reflected on how my partner feels yeah. when I unleash. Yeah. Now, imagine if that happens all the time, whether it's once a day or once a week or once a month. You carry it. <laughs> We met out the front of taxis in 2005 on the 2nd of May and we fell in love on instantly. And it was, yeah, about 7 o'clock that night. 
I said, would you like to go out to dinner? And she said, yes. I was so hungry that I had entree mains and dessert where Susan had one meal. And so the funny thing about that is she thought I was a great listener, but I was eating. She was just eating. I was just eating and Susan was, was talking. And we got married 12 months after that. We spent 12 months, you know, having fun. We went on a three-week honeymoon and then, you know, we got pregnant and then we moved out of home. November of 2011, I was really angry. We were out the back door. I started screaming, yelling, and I headbutted the door like really hard and I headbutted it again and again. Susan was up on the step, I've looked up and she was horrified, she was in shock. And she said, I'm scared of you. And that was the most painful thing that I've ever heard. Come out of Susan's mouth. He's someone that I love telling me that they're scared of me. There was a time where my son was not really putting his pyjamas on, he was playing around. He could pick up that his dad's really angry. So he got up and he went straight in the bed. And he said, OK, Sasha, well, we're going to do it over and over again. Get out of the bed and do it again. Get out of the bed, do it again. So he was yelling and yelling. And Sashko would curl up in the fetal position, my son, and he would just be shaking the whole time. His strength becomes tenfold. I can't stop him. He'll push me out of the way. And he will harm the children, in my opinion. When I was a child, when my dad got angry, I remember feeling scared. And I remember as a child thinking, I don't want to do this. If I have kids, I'm not going to do this. Here I am trying to create a beautiful family and everyone's scared of me. Susanna's engaged in the women's program and seeking support too, so I really hope she embraces it and he continues to do the work he does. many women here have felt like they're going crazy? Just put up your hand if you felt. It's really common that you take responsibility, you don't know what's real anymore, and you feel like you're going absolutely crazy. There is shame, there is embarrassment, where you just think to yourself, why has this happened? You know, did I do it? Is it my fault? Is it something that I triggered? I should have been a better wife, I should have cleaned better, I should have ironed better, I should have done all these things. There's all, all these pressures. You start clearing those files in your brain and think, hang on, it's not me. It's a situation that he did when he was angry and it's the decision he made straight after. I feel like this group is like open heart surgery <laughs> and then you just feel relieved when you walk out. You feel like, oh, there's that support structure. Yeah. So uh, what this has also brought me is strength and independence. For women, it's not making them accountable or responsible for the men's behaviour, but it's making them responsible for their own choices in responding to that behaviour. So it's about educating them with what abuse is, the patterns that they're, they're part of, and giving them tools to do it differently. I've personally experienced all forms of abuse and I've witnessed change in my own family. My abuse started through my childhood. I was sexually abused by my father. There was a lot of other subtle abuses. There was a lot of manipulation and control and a lot of stuff that wasn't obvious. And that had a huge impact on who I was. I did a women's program back then and that made a huge difference. In the men's program, I'm the voice of the women and the children. I'm a reminder for them that this has an impact. Hey fellas. I wanted to do a debrief after last week. 
me what's been going on for you since then. What's the matter, Justin? You just shifted. Well, it's, it's sometimes a little hard. I, I don't know. When we're talking about it, you know, it's putting it in a scenario, and it all makes it sound like it's easy and we've got all the time in the world to be able to do that. What I find with men is I'll get the sceptic that'll come along who sits there and goes, why should I look at change? Why should I bother with these ideas that we talk about? One of the biggest things is um, sometimes wanting to let go of power and control. And some men just won't look at letting that go. I'll say to them that by holding on to that, then you're wanting to be abusive. So we're gonna have a snapshot. You're on the job site. All right, so we've got a tree that's just fallen, pipe's broken, water's pouring everywhere. We've had a bit of stress with this client prior to this. Let's hear all the thoughts that are going through your head while all this is happening. I didn't need her and her shit on my job. Yep, so what's going through your head as you hear her talking? Fuck off, bitch. <laughs> Do you reckon referring to her as a bitch is going to help this situation? Is that positive? What else are we thinking? What's after fuck off? She's still there talking. What are you is fucking painted on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not. don't I just tell you, woman? But she made a whole heap of fuss about nothing. You know, for me, if it, you said, look, this is an accident, but rest assured that this will be fixed. It's not difficult to fix. I give you that guarantee. Excuse me, you know, I don't have the vocab skills in the heat of a moment at the end of the day. Yeah, and I guess that's why we're doing this. How do we now throw that switch and start thinking the positives about all this? What can we be thinking? Don't know what you want me to say, Dave. Don't worry, we'll leave it there. All righty. Um, have a seat. We'll, we'll do this another time. Hey, Justin, can I just quick have a quick word to you, please? How much did you have to drink before tonight? Two cans, Dave. I can smell it on you, and that's what I'm worried about. It's a roadblock. One minute I see you make this really positive shift, and then tonight, it's almost chalk and cheese. She could be in Talbot on the bad guy, and I've got to fucking empathise with everyone that doesn't give a fuck about me or my job or my, the pressures of, on my life. Having a couple under your belt's not going to help. It's like pouring petrol on the fire. Especially if we're going through build up, especially if we're being challenged. It just worries me about you. He's certainly in a bad place. Hopefully, we can just hold on to him and keep him engaged. The damage at home is severe. He he doesn't have the answers, he doesn't have the tools. It's just got to a point where it's destroyed the family. The work we do is really challenging. We're dealing with people's lives and the reality of what we're doing is quite... can be quite serious. It can be life-threatening. Right at this moment, I want to focus in and support you in those really strong instincts that you had. You know, you've, you've got previous experience. You know how this goes. Um, you were able to make a decision on the spot. It was time to get out now, tonight. Being stuck in the house was very scary and obviously you have a child and you want to protect them. I just went on autopilot and I grabbed the girls and put them straight in the car and I drove off thinking that I'd never see him again. I 
guess it's a fear of change. It's been a particular way for so long, and what will I do now? You've lost your partner in spite of the fact that he wasn't a very good partner, and you've lost all the, I guess, the hopes for the future, all the dreams that you had. There's nothing that I have done or that I could do that I would deserve to be treated the way that I was. Okay, the, so the first feeling that we all connect with, or most of us are connecting with, is that there's a feeling that I'm being attacked. Yeah. What's underneath that? What's the first feeling that comes to mind? Anger. Okay, what does anger make you feel? What's under anger? Uh, vulnerable. Okay, feel vulnerable. How does vulnerability make you feel? When I feel vulnerable, I feel what? Small. So what's under feeling small? Scared. Yeah. Okay. When you're behaving badly or reacting to something, it will always be fear-based. Always. What are you scared of? Well, wow. losing what I had and I lost yeah. it, so. Yeah. My soon-to-be ex-wife rang me up and told me she was serving divorce papers on me, so I didn't handle that too well. I sort of broke down on the phone to her. Yeah, that would have been very tough. And it's emotional for your girls too, because it's the end of their mum and dad's relationship. And that's not why you got together. So what do we have to do different? Communicate rather than react because the reaction never leads to anything good. And in some ways, you're lucky. Yeah. You've got an opportunity to make change and make this work, whereas some of the men don't have that opportunity. But they're working on themselves. So that their future relationships will be different and their relationship with their children yeah. will be different. They don't have to turn out like we have. <laughs> so, it's not yeah. like I have. Yeah. In some ways, it's a struggle because they haven't been taught. You know, they look at their upbringing and, you know, they've got to provide. They lose sight of the, the little things about you know, being able to cuddle their children, to be able to have that talk and watch that child grow. So what's happiness? A lot of these guys have got no idea. Family's really important to me. My grandson, he just recharges my battery every time I see him. He just, he's just so gorgeous. And my son, my daughter, they've kept me balanced. I kind of find an internal strength. Here we go. Good blow. Big blow. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Hit it? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> we gotta eat it now, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want you to read through the traditional man's rule, rule book and circle. Any of these points that you can say at some stage you've you've hung on to. And then you might come up with an, a rule that we haven't thought of, that we haven't got on our list, and you think we should add to it. Yep, we'll get some paper. What does the yeah, old rule book, which is the old, yeah, your old style yeah, of thinking, this is old rule. Teacher, teach you about women and men? Yeah. Who is more important? Who is responsible for what? The old yeah. rule book. 
Well, the old rule book would be the woman who's responsible for the home. Yep. And the man goes out to work and earns, earns the bread, you know? Earns the bucks. Um, Nathan's... <clears throat> what happened there? Yeah. He signed the divorce papers, John. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a closure for him. But he hasn't closed. No. It wasn't his choice. What have you and others, in brackets, partner, friends, children, lost by adhering to traditional men's rule book? <clears throat> First three things that come out of our mouths, myself, Oscar and Justin, was trust, love and family. Family is missing out and not feeling important. And then the reverse of the question, what we have created is we create fear by adhering to it. What a huge cost. <clears throat> we had um, respect, <coughs> trust, marriage and relationship breakdown. Change what's happened. Yeah, I can't change what's happened. I just gotta try and deal with it. And like you said earlier, even though you haven't been together and Sue's moved on, you always hoped. Yeah, I always hoped it would yeah. You'd get another chance. Yeah. It's been too late for that relationship. And you have two beautiful girls with you at the moment. I deserve you the best you can be. Yeah. It's not too late for them. It's not too late for you. It's letting go of someone you loved. Still and love still love. wife had come here, the one me to sign the divorce papers. And I just can't help thinking that it may have been just something to hurt me just that one last time. And it did hurt me a lot. And maybe I deserved it, I don't know. Maybe I did. You can't break down crying every time you see her. I live in the same town. There's times where I'm gonna run into her. And, you know, even run into her boyfriend. And <laughs> I'm never gonna shake his hand or say g'day, but... I know if I hadn't come to see Jack and Dave, he would be in a whole different place right now. And I would probably be in jail because that's the sort of person I was. I know I could walk past him in the street now and just suck it up like a big boy. Three positions. Yeah, but we move depending on what we're trying to do. Up here, the persecutor. And as I'm persecuting you, I might go too far and I actually see that it's not working and I'm not getting what I want. I wear the position of being the rescuer. I can move back and persecute more. Or I might take the position of being the victim. I'm just going to try and role play some statements. Bullshit! What would that be? Persecutor, persecutor. Oh, give me a break, will ya? Victim. You just like your mother. Persecutor. I'm not bloody Superman. Victim. 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 Everyone does this. Male, whoa, female. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean everyone does it? Male, female. Oh. I agree with Justin. Everyone's playing this game. Who's not playing it? I don't play it. You don't play it? Not today, not once? Were you one of those you're people? Learning. You weren't a rescuer yeah. not once today? Am I right to assume that you're saying these three positions are unhealthy? Yes. Because that's what it sounds like. I don't they think are. those three positions are unhealthy. They are. they are. It's a survival mode. What happens if you do all this, you put your thoughts and feelings on the shelf and listen to the other person? Mm. <clears throat> 
right? And then you want to try and express yourself about what you're going through or whatever, and they don't want to listen. Challenge. But what happens if it just keeps going on that you wait your turn for, for so many weeks or whatever it is? Or years. Or years, yeah, or years for some people. And you're there for everyone else and you put your thoughts and feelings on the side to listen and then nothing happens. We can only deal with working on us here, changing us. I got that, Dave. So but what about my kids who are going to walk into a society where 80%, 50% of good. people are doing this? Me. So you're going to teach them how do you deal no, with no, that? No, no, no. I won't teach them. They will respond that way, won't they? Because of nature. Not if you teach this. Both people have got to be on the same page. No, they don't. Oh, I think so. What brought you guys to this group was this type of behaviour. This is real. After a break. Smoko, coffee, go, toilet, have a break. If, if, if nothing's changing at home and only I'm changing, then it feels like I'm doing it for nothing. I feel like at home I'm playing happy family. And the more I see that, the more aggravated I am inside. How would you imagine it being different? How would I imagine it different? Mm. No guilt, no shame. With you? With me. No, no pretend happy family. Is that only how, the only way I can describe it? So we make three steps, go three steps forward? Yeah, six back. Three steps forward? Six back. Happy family, real happy family, doesn't exist. It's a fucking myth. What's happening to him is that he's losing his power and control. His partner is working on herself. She's engaged in the women's program. She's learning to set boundaries. And in doing so, Sasko is probably finding that some of this behavior that he's doing isn't working. She's actually calling him on it. Hi, Susanna, it's Jackie from Heavy Metal. How are you? Good. Are you able to talk at the moment? It's quite stressful for you, obviously. I can hear in your voice. Something really serious has happened. Yeah. There's been an incident involving Sasko and his son. Yeah, but are you feeling safe? I came back from the women's group and I said, how are the kids? Everything's great. Didn't think anything of it. Went to bed. In the morning, um, my son gets up and I notice his cheek was red. And I said, what happened? Did you fall at school? I didn't notice it when I picked you up. He said, no, Daddy hit me. And I ran into the room. He was sleeping because he was working night shift. Um, and I said, did you hit our son? He goes, no. I said, no, I'm going to ask you again. Did you hit him? He goes, yeah, but. I said, I don't want to hit butts. Get your bags, get out of here. I don't want to see it ever again. I reported it to the police and DHS. I'm not going to let this happen again. It's too damaging to, to our son, to the family. It's not worth it. So, just a check-in of what's been happening over the last week. Um, on Thursday night, I chose to be violent and um, I abused my son and my partner has asked me to leave. Everything that's happened it's totally my fault. And I'm really sad. 
So the trust has been violated and has been broken. So it will take time and who knows where it goes. A lot will be on the choices you make. It took incredible strength for her to stand up. Yeah. She needs to keep herself and the children safe. Absolutely. We've made a report to Child Protection, which has led to getting the police involved, and they'll be investigating this. We have to now offer Susanna and the children a lot of ongoing support here. And at the same time, we've got a lot of work to do with Sasko and keeping an eye on him. Hi, Sasko, it's um, Dave calling from the program. I'm just um, giving you a follow-up call um, to see where you're at and how you're travelling. Um, maybe you give me a call back. I was a little bit worried about how you left last night. When you work so close to these guys, the months go by and, and you see the growth, you see the changes, and then something like this happens, it's really disheartening. And then there's a the little voice in the back of your head going, oh, you see, men really don't change. This is all a waste of time, this is bullshit. And you know, there's times when you have this self-doubt, you go, oh, what do we do? You throw the towel in and you quit. We keep working, we keep supporting him. We keep working with her, supporting her. We challenge him, we, we don't, you know, we don't dismiss it, we call it. It's, a, it's abuse, it's violence, there's no excuse. It was a choice. But at the same time, we have to be supportive. I'm not going to have any expectations where it's going to repair in a day, it won't. Nothing repairs in a day, especially any kind of violence, whether it's emotional or physical, because it affects the children. It affects me. And at the end, I just think to myself, why am I doing this? Why am I in this relationship? David speaking. Yes, we, we ran a women's support program on Thursday evenings. The program runs on a Thursday evening from 7 till, till 9.30. OK. And you, you sound like a, bit, a little bit nervous about the idea of doing that. Women and men will ring up and, and say, Is it, you know, can, if I do your program, will I change? Women say, will he change? I guess that's the question that um, is often asked. Look, honestly, it comes back to the, to the individual. We've got to be realistic. In some cases, the abuse might not stop. All right, guys, um, Tanya's joining us tonight. Tanya is very much part of our team. I was in a domestic violence relationship many years ago and I have, after that process, gone through and gone on to join women's programs and things just like you guys are doing. So we might as well just get straight into it tonight. So the first thing I want you to do, I just want you to get comfortable in your seats and close your eyes, try and centre yourself. Now, I want to take you back to a time where you were really angry at your partner. And what are the words you're saying to your partner? What are you thinking? Just write the words or phrases on a single piece of paper and then screw it up. And throw it in the bin. Why do I have to put up with this? Why? Are you just deaf? 
Or are you just fucking stupid? You're a bitch! Why don't you? Why don't you pack up and leave? For Christ's sake. I am so sick of this shit. Sick of it. You hear me? I'm sick of it. Why is it you can't just back me up for once? I just can't stand you anymore. Do you want to share what that was like? Um, I'm still shaking. Um, as you know, I haven't been in this relationship for 17 years. But this still impacts me. It's there, it's with me forever. What was that like to see that being done to me? Made me feel sick. Especially when my words were read out. Yep. Mm. What about you guys? Shameful. Yeah. Mm. This is all about fear. Control, power. How do you change that? How do you do it different? Mm. And good outlook. I feel really selfish. fair amount of uh, shame, ill feeling towards myself. It shattered me, but uh, I am feeling a lot better. Not that it's showing, but uh, about everything, uh, I'm not as stressed and pulling the air out as, as what I was when I was with her. Miss her heaps. I can understand why she left. A little bit of a hard ass. Um, I was out of home by uh, 14. I never went back after that. And lived on the streets, got myself in a lot of trouble. Ended up in jail. And I picked up a lot of probably bad habits, you might call them. Maybe bad morals. And uh, they're instilled in me. And hard lessons to relearn or, or reprogram myself. I see what we're doing in group, and I, I see its advantages, and I can see it's working. Uh, unfortunately, it's just all a little bit late. to these myths, mm -hmm. then I'm going to respond accordingly to that. I'm just writing the old what values promote mean? old behaviours. Yeah. My boy, I, 
if he's crying or that, he's, um, it's, it's what are you talking about, you know? Um, stop crying or, um, suck it up, princess. You're not the only one, Justin. And my, my boy says it too. All right, so just read out the old one and then read out your new one. Expression of emotion is unmasculine and sign of weakness. Little and big boys don't cry. We come up with real men are in touch with their emotions and are able to identify and express them in a non-violent and non-abusive manner. The weakness is in hiding their feelings. Wow. That's, awesome. That's, That's awesome. really good. Really good. I think, it's, I think yours is written better. <laughs> Did you? Did you cheat? <laughs> Easy, you're hurting his feelings. <laughs> Dave, Justin. Not too bad, mate. I'm just getting a little bit of work coming in now, so. Ooh. Watching me boy try and kill himself on a motorbike. <laughs> yep, yeah, will do, mate. I'll see you on Monday. Cheers, Dave. See you, mate. Take it easy, just sit down. OK? Sit, just sit down. I'll go right back. Sure, you all right? Yeah, I'm Get knocked off your bike, you get back up and get on it. He's tough. <laughs> well, we like to get out amongst them hills. Plenty of tracks out there for the Forbian and that. Yeah. Go and do my nan's mum's side on Christmas Eve and getting <coughs> most of my presents then and then coming to Dad's for Christmas Day. We don't cuddle much, do we? No. <laughs> the myths with the children. Some of the myths are doesn't affect them, they're too young. They can't hear us, they're asleep. It was good enough for me, it's good enough for my children. I'm okay, aren't I? Why do uh, children and partners need support? So they do not grow up thinking violence and abuse is okay. So they feel loved, so they feel worthy, so they know it's not their fault. Just anything stand out or what, what's going on for you when you're hearing that? I know that I've, I've, I've done violence to my family and I feel quite ashamed when I hear those words. Yeah. Um, and I keep working on both my kids. I did get a little bit of feedback from my daughter. She at least made contact. It's making headway a little bit. That's great. 
Good on you. Jeez. Good on you. But even if she doesn't, don't stress too much. Oh, I'm trying to figure out what to get her for her birthday and what for Christmas. Something she can keep. I want to get her something that she actually wants to. Yeah. Mm. Maybe you could ask her too. And if, if you're able to connect, say that you'd like to get her something she could keep and you're able to take her shopping so she could choose something she loves. Mm. That might be something I could do. But I think initially, because it's been a bit of time since she connected, just keep it really low key and no pressure. You're going to have to build the trust between the two of you. So it's about, you know, reaching out to her, but in small ways initially, until she feels safe and that she can trust you. Good job. I think you're doing an amazing job. I really do. And they're worth fighting for. Oh, so. no, no. And good on you for hugging your son. I think that's awesome. Cheers, thanks. You alright? See you later. See you next week. See you on Sunday. Right, we can come out Since the violent abuse that I did two weeks ago, now my partner is super sensitive. Even my tones of voice, you know. She's lost trust in me. I promised her twice. I've let her down twice. I'm back at home, but there's nothing certain for me at the moment. There's, there's, there's no givens. I'm grateful and I can really see when I look back how selfish I was. There was no gratefulness, there was just me. My daughter's, she doesn't articulate it but what she does say is, Daddy I want to be with you today and so when she does that I feel <laughs> she's feel safe enough to stay with me for longer periods of time because before, when she feels that, that build up, that energy tension, she, I want mummy. Whereas before I didn't get that I'm creating that. I just thought, you know, she wants mummy. Children play a huge role in men really recognising their behaviour and making a change. It could be that they see their five-year-old yelling at their partner the way they yell and saying the things they say. Even during the program when we talk about their daughters and talk about you're actually educating your daughter to accept this. If you're abusive, that ripple effects out to everyone you're connected to. If you're changing, that has the ripple effect too for everyone you touch and connect with. The other day, I said to my oldest daughter, I said, God, do you have to be so much like your mother? <laughs> and that was it. Oh, well. That was it. She cracked it, you know? You should not say anything about your ex-partner that's derogatory. You should be very respectful of her. You're not together anymore. I don't think I'll ever be respectful to her. Well, there's a major block because you have two daughters mm. and it's their mum. That's why I don't, I just try not to talk about her at all. And the girls will know that that's walk on eggshells around you about mum. Mm. You don't have to put her down. OK, come up here with me. Give us a description what happened before the build-up. Well, I opened the door their bathroom and it was just... <laughs> what am I thinking? And I'm thinking, I bet this is Riley because one of my kids is a clean freak and the other one is just... Shocking. Okay. Just like her mum. Okay, so the outcome is boom. Mm. Yeah. But I've got control of my thought process here. How can I work this differently? Right. 
Take a deep breath. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just breathe. Yeah, breathe. Okay, right eye. It's a mess. Um, I'm going to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. Kids get home. I go, guys, can you please clean up your mess in the bathroom? I just have thought about to breathe. Yeah. Yeah, come over. How does that make you feel now? How uh, are you feeling? Pretty calm. Uh, pretty relaxed. Relaxed? Yeah. Good. Well, I love my girls. It's good. I love my girls. I yeah. feel good. What else do yeah. you feel? Um, I feel proud. Proud? Yeah, you reckon you're bad at feelings? You're doing really good. <laughs> all right, so we had all those thoughts here, yeah? Yeah. Those yeah. feelings. They're real, aren't they? Those yeah. thoughts, feelings. Absolutely. Can't change that. That's happened. But you've, you've got this new thought process happening. And that's triggered all these feelings. Yeah. Proud. I feel great. I feel happy. I feel relaxed. Yeah. Whatever we did that night in the program created this 360 degree shift. At the end of the program, he came up and he said, I'm going to ring my partner and apologise. I've just realised what I've been doing. It's been about me. I was trying to say, those guys that are still with their partners, just really work at it. What's that there, you said? They said, if you're still with your partner, really work at it. Wow. Good on you. When I say to my daughter that you're just like your mother, she gets really upset with that. Maybe 20 minutes later, I walked into her bedroom to find her and she was sitting on the, on the floor in her walk-in cupboard just with the doors open, just sitting in the back of her cupboard. Just sitting there, just staring into space. And I've just got to be mindful of that and I've got to be, not slip back into my old ways and of gruff horribleness and just, she'll be right, mate, you know? Because she won't be right. Come on, Let us... Let us... Yeah. Ah. I mean, knife's not too good. Should be all right. Check the date on it. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. In the beard, look at it. Look I don't want to look at it. Just throw it. Just throw it. Throw it out. It ain't no good. <laughs> when I said to you the other week that you're just like your mum. Yeah. And then you cracked it. Yeah. When mum used to say you're just like little Nathan, you know, I cracked it big time. And she goes, there you go. And I'd be like, wow, well, don't call me that. Mm. As much as I love you both, you know, I want to be there. I don't want to act like both of you because you both need work. Like, I want to have your strength and will. And I want to have, I don't know, what does mum have? She's just got, I don't know, she's just, just a strong woman. She, she's a strong woman with courage and, you know, that's what I see mm. in both of you. So Back way back in, like, 12 months ago, when he wasn't angry, he was actually, he was like this. He was just most caring, like, Care Bear. He was, you know, cuddly, you know, he was like cuddly. <laughs> but, you know, when, when he was the angry bear, like, you know, just want to step away from him. But now he's like, he's like the cuddly bear 24 7. The bear. The don't, bear. Don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that bear, I don't see that bear anymore. Yeah. The bear's not there. It's Yogi, it's, Yogi, it's Yogi Bear. It's Yogi Bear. <laughs> they say leopard never changes their spots. I, I don't believe that. I think any abuser, male or female, makes a choice. So once he stops and thinks about the choice he's about to make, that's the day I can say that he is a changed person. That he... I don't think anyone could ever, or should ever write off anyone. Ever.
Some men are just so entrenched in their beliefs of, I'm the head of this family and she's my wife. I can do whatever I like and nobody can stop me from doing it. I do feel a lot stronger with the distance that is between us. And I don't live with fear anymore, which was a constant companion. There's no brushing it under the covers anymore. Our friends, family know about what happened, so there's no hiding behind it anymore. We need to move forward. I don't want it to define me. This time of year, I'm pretty happy, but um, there could be some sad moments because we, you know, uh, Sash could slip into a situation where he could get upset. So it's the walking on eggshells. So we just have to just monitor the triggers to make sure it doesn't happen again. I've seen a lot of areas in him that is good. He's a great dad. And he does know that if this ever happens again, this is it. This, this will break the camel's back, if they say. Either make it work now or it'll never work again. So tonight we want to concentrate on how are you guys going to get through Christmas? In a previous Christmas, there was 2,308 calls from women in Victoria asking for help. Christmas Eve, there was 125 incidences of family violence. It's Christmas Eve. Mm. That's the time that's supposed to be about families. And we want every one of you not to be part of this. So we want you to reflect on what you're taking away. The one thing for you that's been the most powerful. Biggest thing for me has been uh, um, learning to let go. You know, I've had to let go of my marriage, my wife, everything. I've had to let it all go because I held my marriage in very high regard. And to learn that I probably destroyed it has uh, been a real shitty experience. Hmm. I've learned a lot of patience and um, not to be in such a rush and get that frustration and all the rest of it, negative, the build up. I had to talk to me kids rather than sort of yell at them. I'm a little excited um, to see how it comes out. One of the things, and I didn't even realise, is because my kids are, you know, seven and three, it's, there's a lot of imagination and running with that and, yeah, letting them be. Letting them be kids. Mm. Yeah. Walking that door the first time is really challenging and difficult. You know, this room should be filled with hundreds of people. But you guys are the ones here that made the commitment to be different and to allow your families to feel safe. It changes lives and it will change the lives of the people you love and your life. So embrace what you've learned and carry it out into the world with you. It was asked to me earlier today, why do I do this work? And I'll tell you right now, it's guys like you. You give me strength to just keep coming back, not quitting and doing it again. And so hang in there and go do it. And we'll be back next year to give you more, give you a hard time, kick you up the arse. 
All right, let's go do it. Let's get out of here. Have an awesome Christmas, guys. program, we know we don't have a crystal ball for where these people are going to end up. But what I do know is that something has shifted in these people and whatever way I contributed to that that made a difference and helped that family feel safer, that's reason enough to keep doing it. Hiding up. Well, what is it? Oh, it might be a snapper. That's a banjo shark. Emmy, you need to write, wind your line in, mate. Look, there he is. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Look at his eyes. Here. All right. In he goes. Ready? In you go, little fella. Men tend to lose sight of how much power they really have, how much positive influence that they can have. They lose sight of that. You know, we talk about power and control in a negative way. But if we look at the opposite of that, they can have a massive influence on breaking this cycle by being positive role models for their children. I'm ashamed of what I've done. I'm not gonna hide it. I'm happy to address it and, and sort it out. Six months' time, I'm hoping I'm a dad again and I've got a couple of happy kids that are happy to be with me, happy to talk with me, and just happy to be my kids. for their lives and there will be children that witness that trauma this is strength this is strength getting up every day making the best of your life strength isn't about muscles and force and power strength is about being the best person we can be this is on your shoulders this is on my shoulders it's up to us to raise gentlemen and to create cultures of respect. We owe that to the many, many victims that do not always have a voice. David's people. Yeah, good mate, yourself. <laughs> 